All right, so we're about to get started with this lesson today. I'm just going down a little some examples of how the heterosexuals are, the heterosexual community is benefiting within the heteronormativity and the heteronormative establishment. This is all implicated when it comes to y'all privileges, the implicit ways that y'all are benefiting. I'm going to take you down this list. So you are, the first one I got is you are not identified or labeled politically, socially, or economically, or otherwise by your sexual orientation. You're not identified or labeled in this way. Uh, you don't have to defend yourself against how existing state policies discriminate unlawfully uh, without substantial justification. Um, and choose the citizens granted the fundamental rights to marry. I hate my own writing. Don't you hate that when you write something down and you make it, it look like it made so much sense and then I'm sitting here looking at this crappy ass word and, and what is this? D-I-C-K? Is that what I think I spelled it like? Oh, pick. <laughs> <laughs> That's P P I C K. <laughs> okay. <laughs> My mind was in the wrong place. <laughs> All right, stay focused, Cornelius. You don't have to defend yourself against existing state policies. Uh that discriminate unlawfully without substantial justi justification. Uh, that pick they pick and choose the citizens uh, that are granted the fundamental right to marry. So it's not favoring heterosexuals in certain states uh, for this same-sex union seen as a way of uh, are are these not state policies that discriminate now against others? So everybody's a, a right or fundamental right to marry is under question now, or it's doubtful because in this state we can't get married, so we gotta drive over to the next state to get married. This is a this is an inconvenience and a burden. These are state policies that are already in existence. Y'all don't have to defend yourself ahead of sexuals in this way. Y'all have to go run off to another state to get married. Think about how uh, damaging and taxing and inconvenient and a burden it is on, on our lives when all we want to do is just coexist together and, and live in the same kind of construct that's going to give us the more sense of peace and harmony in our lives, which was promised by heteronormativity. But y'all don't even want us to benefit from heteronormativity because y'all realize that y'all do get privileges. And not being able to uh, defend yourself is one of them. So now gay people are getting married and getting kids with adoptions. We don't have to defend ourselves because we're under the same heteronormative construct. And as long as everything looks good on paper, then we're good. But y'all want to distinguish us by our sexual orientations in this way. And y'all labeling us. And this is why it's being labeled and we're being identified politically, socially, economically, and otherwise. And God forbid it be a poor black man that's trying to adopt or somebody that makes a low income, less than, just gonna say less than 40,000. He want him and his boyfriend who are, he's not legally married to yet on paper, they now wanted to adopt. This will be a problem for the agency. They gonna look at all his economic, uh, if he's known and they are gonna go throughout his whole school history his community asking questions, his church affiliations. Is he a part of any affiliations, political affiliations? And they're gonna definitely zone in on his sexual orientation. Why aren't y'all married? Uh, and things of this nature. So we won't buy into this heteronormative construct because y'all don't have the union intact and in place to be able to ensure, I guess, the, the security of that child. But they'll bring this argument up uh, 
as substantial justification to why they now don't want you getting married in this state to begin with. We ensure that y'all don't make you ain't gonna make enough money. Uh, y'all don't raise your socioeconomic status up to even we even want kids to be able to be able to afford to make make them. So they just was hoping that we just wouldn't want this same model as them. It's offensive to them. I get it. But then I understand it because uh, why they need to have empathy for us now. Uh, because it's showing, the, I guess, the punery of their own hearts in their condition that y'all are in. Because y'all are not more righteous and more moral and whole. When you're closed off and your heart is black like this. And you cannot say that God favors y'all within this institution and this establishment when y'all are showing these bad representations of this Christ-like consciousness that's supposed to be all embracing of these identities that want to get married and don't want to be labeled politically and socially, economically, and our sexual orientations being labeled constantly against this these state policies just to further demarcate and discriminate against us. So this is one claim that these state policies that I'm making is that y'all are benefiting in this way, that y'all don't have to defend yourself against these existing state policies that discriminate unlawfully without substantial justification. Uh, and then y'all get to pick it and then they pick and choose what citizens they want to grant these fundamental rights to marry. You can just go up to the courthouse hand in hand <laughs> with no with your no English speaking Filipina foreigner talking about you a veteran and you, you rest to get married. They ain't asking you no questions. And y'all got a 30, 25 year age gap. You you 55, 60 years old and she 20 sitting there blinking like this. Don't know how to speak English. And they OK with that. That's a privilege. This is a privilege because those same existing policies policies exclude citizens from uh, from merely because of their from any right merely because of their sex or sexual orientation. Either claim can be expressed in terms of the Equal Protection Clause of the U.S. Constitution's Fourteenth Amendment which provides that no state may deny to any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the laws. <laughs> so if you got a, a, a law that is validating opposite sex couples uh, marriage, then, but this clause in the U.S. Constitution of the 14th Amendment is providing that the state cannot deny any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of laws, then that is saying implicitly that I, as a same-sex couple, am granted, should be granted the same privileges and rights as this opposite-sex couple in terms of matrimony. That is what that clause is, I guess, is saying to me. The first claim that the state is picking and choosing who they want to be married in that state, that state policy, those state policies discriminate by picking and choosing the citizens that are granted the fundamental right to marry can also be expressed in terms of of the due process clause of the 14th amendment, which has been interpreted to ensure that the state will not unduly interrupt people's privacy rights. Okay, think about that. So these are just how it's affecting it politically. If you look at the morality, so the political moral, uh, the political morality of this is making these claims. within the 14th Amendment. Both claims can be expressed as violations of equal rights or privacy provisions in the state constitution. 
constitutional and in, and the constitutional invalidation of existing state policies to not allow these same sex couples now the equal rights as these opposite sex couples because this clause in the 14th amendment is protecting them in this way it's protecting them because they're under the same jurisdiction they cannot be denied equal protection under this law if we get, if straight people can get married then we should be able to get married under the same law right they can't pick and choose the citizens they want to be granted this fundamental right to marry. So this is all implicated. These claims are being implicated with all of these uh, 14th Amendment laws, due process. It can be expressed by violations of equal rights or privacy provisions in state constitutions and the constitutional invalidation of existing state policies so these are all arguments that you can make if you're having these problems in within your state or your country that you're in the state cannot arbitrarily allocate the rights to marry and there is no good justification for denying that right to same-sex couples LGBT people should be able to marry the same on the same terms as heterosexual couples under the American jurisprudence or legal system. All right, so that was just number one. <laughs> They're not always going to be all in detail, but I wanted to go in a little bit more explanation of how y'all how this identified how y'all are not being identified by the label of heteronormativity to to. Just y'all don't have to pull out of the constitution to go get married, right? Y'all can get married to foreigners, and most of, even if their immigrations are giving y'all uh, free passes in these immigration offices, uh, and not putting y'all under the same scrutiny as a lot of these same gender couples, because no matter you know what the situation looks like, it could be so obvious that it's a contract marriage, and they won't even question it. As long as they opposite sex, that's cool. So a lot of men are just realizing, let me just get married, even to a foreign woman, no matter, and I can still be who I am in my in terms of my identity. But I'm gonna benefit because I realize that there's social benefits to me just being married to whoever. But she loaned that person is opposite sex. That's all they care about. And that's all this establishment cares about. And that's all religion is caring about too at this point. They're not promoting saying the black woman to stay with the black man anymore. They're not embracing this family unit anymore. So who's really tearing, trying, tearing this family unit apart, this black nuclear family, uh, when the church is not promoting it anymore? So they are they working for or against the family unit at this point in the game? All the while not letting it letting this man explain it to this man who got this warlock spirit on him that he's being ineffective. So it's a whole conspiracy among these men and how they're choosing to carry on. And they they're being couched behind heteronormativity so they don't have to be identified or labeled as heterosexuals and all the dysfunctions that's behind this identity because uh, they're going to be given the equal protections they're going to be given law they're going to be given the right to do it who marry who they want number two no one questions the normality of my sexuality or your sexuality or believes your sexuality was caused by psychological trauma sin or abuse haven't y'all noticed that we rarely talk about trauma within heteronormativity among the identities of heterosexual people like as if molestation incest never happened uh nuclear family households uterine family wasn't a present in a, among heterosexual couples uh, it's a dishonesty that they've been carrying on as if they're well-rounded and balanced in this area when they know that they're suffering emotionally, so many emotional voids uh, that has created the closing of their hearts 
and this is facilitated the darkening of their hearts as well and the closing and the hardening of the heart. Uh, but y'all still being y'all never questioned about you being molested about anything about you being molested by your uncle. Um, you're never going to be questioned about your father molesting you or anything. But we're going to automatically assume within y'all heterosexuals that the gay, lesbian, and trans person mu must be this way. And it must have been caused by some sexual trauma, psychological trauma done to them. Or And then you're going to automatically call it a sin and, and say, well, it's a sin anyway. So they had a choice whether they want to continue on a life like this. Uh, but y'all will condemn them anyways because that person will more than likely have certain attributes that are going to signal to you that they are y'all we are living in a lifestyle that is seen as precarious to y'all well he's an implemented male so he must be living a homosexual lifestyle then you'll group it in that little categorical identity box and it'll give it right to uh gaslight it and say psychological trauma and you're going to put some more injunctions on it and say it's a sin and then you're going to further denigrate it and create abuse for it and deny it and shun it and pretend like it don't exist. All the while saying that you're inclusive in this church setting. <laughs> you see the hypocrisy of that? But nobody will question y'all, even though we know that the pastor is greedy and he has a spirit of greed on him. I mean, his wife is a Jezebel, no, Jezebel, and members of the church are sleeping with other members of the church and fornicating. We know all of this of y'all flawed characters. And let's not get on the more obvious and overt abuses of power within this mindset of, of y'all, I guess, mindset of what y'all deem it to be normal in society. Just keeping this woman subjugated is one example of how warped and backwards y'all minds are. Uh, but y'all are not questioned in this way because y'all y'all still benefiting from just we're normal because we're straight. It don't matter if I'm a deadbeat, abuser, womanizer, rapist, anything. I'm straight. It don't matter. And you'll never be questioned in this way. Uh, nothing will be attributed. Your psychopathy, your narcissism is never going to be attributed to trauma, childhood traumas. They're never going to call your fornication, your promiscuity a sin because you're still sleeping with women and your wife coming to church with a black eye is never going to be suspected of foul play because y'all are still together and keeping things looking copacetic number three you do not have to fear uh that family friends or co-workers will find out about your sexual orientation and that there are no longer uh and there will be negative consequences for you you're not a fear of all of this. You're not a fear of your buddies uh, finding out that you cheated on your wife with another woman. They encouraged it. <laughs> they gave you the number of the hoe that they met at the strip club. So y'all are glorifying this. Uh, family members gonna going to know that you cheated on your wife, and they're not going to say anything either. Uh, man, you shouldn't have did that. And, you just mess things up and all oh, your wife is distraught and want to divorce and everything, but they're not going to punish you as hard as strict as when they found out uh, that somebody, some gay guy, some gay member of the family went out and had sex on Grindr uh, and caught an STD and had to reveal to his mother that he had sex with a man at 16. That's not going to, that's going to be uh really sh uh demeaned uh and looked down on a lot more uh than you cheating on your wife <laughs> number four uh my sexual orientation if known is not used to exclude me from any professions or orientations like scouts the military coaching teaching uh, number five, if my partner dies, I can inherit automatically under these the probate laws as well as get paid leave for work and condolences from colleagues. These are all privileges that you get. 
you know, the probate laws will automatically allow you to be the benefactor, a beneficiary of, of the deceased. Automatic, inherit everything to you, as well as get paid leave at work, and you'll get condolences from colleagues. This is a this is privilege that you have. Uh, the heterosexual man is never accused in a damaging way of being deviant, warped, perverted, or psychologically confused or dysfunctional because of his sexual orientation. Other men are complicit by using cold words when we're talking about the, all of the dysfunction that's going on with men right now, how y'all creating all this uh, misogyny. So they'll say things like, the words like society and opposed to just saying men uh, as to who is the real problem in this society. I noticed this about this, this warlock who wants to be complicit to all this raping. He'll say just society. He'll blanket it, the problem and, and cover it up, camouflage it and just say society and generalize it. So you don't really have a, a real identifier of who to blame. That's what the devil does. And that's a little violent spirit as well. You, number seven, you get reduced rates with your partner on health, auto, and homeowner insurance. Uh, number eight, you get immediate access to loved ones in the hospital where we will be denied access into a room where our loved ones were ill or deceased or dying. Number nine, you get support and inclusion with your families of origin for your relationships with a partner, no matter how dysfunctional they are. Uh, they ain't gonna never tell y'all to break up. Uh, y'all made a wrong decision. The decision to make a baby together was wrong, even though you see the whole choice to be together was wrong. Just the decision to be gay identified is wrong. So everything else is going to come with that is going to be wrong. Me getting an education wrong. Me going to the military was wrong. Me getting writing books was wrong. Just by me having a gay identified, y'all identify, y'all put this label on me to consign me to a way of treating me. And y'all simplified it this way. Uh, so I don't feel included in this way. I don't feel supported in my family of origin, which is why we create gay communities things of this if you wonder why there's so many gay alliances out here straight people they sure do come together when things happen in this community we sure do because it's, we're just like, we're looking at our plight like this woman but we don't got to deal with this draconian system of being under y'all yoke conjugal marriage with conjugal marriage but this trans woman now have to deal with you now when it comes to that now is you gonna go be her now and cheat on her like you did with the bio female? I don't know. She might fight you back. You don't think you want that kind of fight. Um, y'all need to really start standing up for yourselves, trans women, and let these men know that y'all ain't weak like the woman as you get fucked like one. Number 10, you can kiss, hug, hold your partner's hand without disapproval, comments, laughter, harassments, or threat of violence. Y'all can do this. I've made this note in other videos, but I just wanted to put it all together and just kind of consolidate all my thoughts of how y'all are privileging. So when I just say y'all get privileged, you got a whole list of things and you can go back to this video to remind yourself of how you're being privileged. So when I'm complaining about how I can't walk with my boyfriend's hand and it's a form of an oppressive structure, you can understand that that's a form of y'all privilege under the guise of heteronormativity. This establishment is giving y'all the right to do this, no matter how offended other people are of it. Number 11, you easily find religious communities that will welcome you and your partner. Yeah, come on to our church. Uh, and they're so welcoming of y'all, no matter how dysfunctional and conniving y'all are, no matter how 
much Jezebelic activity y'all bring to the church and confusion y'all bring and heart headache y'all cause on this pastor. You can have the most tithe, devoted tithe paying, same gender cup marriage couple in the church, crossing their eyes, down their T's, very quiet, hardly speak, very respectful. And they'll still be seen less than the, the crazy Jezebel warlock couple that wants to come in and change up things and cut, he, they cussing the pastor out and saying that he ain't good, he ain't no good, he's just using people for money and creating all this discord in the church. And everybody know that they dysfunctional and crazy, uh, even in their own marriage. But y'all tolerate that and say nothing about that on the level. Y'all almost scrutinize that as more as y'all will on these things. Just y'all. Y'all so gay affirming in that church. That's why I don't go there. Because, you know, Pastor Warren, he just got everybody in, in this church. They, <laughs> it's the whole rainbow in that church. So y'all go straight to this when you see all these gay, lesbian, and trans identities inside the church. On the pulpit, counseling other people. Y'all get offended and thrown in town, bothered by that. Because all y'all can see is this person's expression. But y'all know that uh deacon deacon leroy with the gold tooth and with the with the fish fry company uh fresh uh uncle leroy's fresh fry and co and he's sitting his picture sitting there with the gold tooth we, we know that he's also endeavoring in money laundering and he's endeavoring in uh dog fighting gambling as well but we ain't gonna say nothing about him because his wife is sitting over there all nice and copacetic with him uh so <laughs> this is how y'all getting away with all this privilege. This man has been so arrogant and prideful at getting away with this. Does he know that Jezebel is never going to say anything? He can just treat you how he wants, dump, dump you with whatever, a disease, babies. Y'all never going to speak up and say anything because y'all been run by Jezebel's spirit. I want y'all to know this. And this Ahab is on y'all too. These are all primordial spirits. Let's go, let's go, Cornelius, let's go. All right, what's next? So y'all easily able to find y'all communities, settle in with your dysfunctions and cause all your little warlock and Jezebelic activity within the church, the discord, the strife. And y'all, this can be all tolerated. Everybody be gossiping and bagbiting and slandering each other. And, and y'all be okay with that, but let a gay couple come in there. Y'all don't want to validate them at all, their marriage. You don't want them to speak up and have a voice. And y'all just try to seclude and marginalize them within this space that's supposed to be embracing and accepting of them. I can see why they experience all this church hurt. Uh, and then this loud, this Leviathan spirit to hop into them because y'all facilitated all these spirits to be running the show in, in, these, uh, in these places, uh, safe spaces. And this is what God is really tired of. We got these space, safe spaces supposed to be the most equal, uh, less judgmental. And we got to figure out a way to disseminating this knowledge that's in this Bible without ridiculing and separating and secluding people that are living in, a, in, in, in today, modern day world. That's not seeing their life in, in the context of this Bible. Y'all don't want to do no type of Bible studies no more. Y'all ain't got that out of the church too. So it's like, are they even still doing Bible studies? And what are they? I need to start going to churches and start observing how they teaching these people. Because the last time I checked, you just go in and you already met with just a percussion of music going on so loud. It's just like <laughs> the lights are going off. It's like you're in a concert. It's so much entertainment. You just don't know exactly what you need to be focusing on uh, because everything has been pre-scripted and guiding you to how it's going to control your salvation and how you're going to liberate. Uh, and the people are still lost in there and dazed as they're paying their tithes and they feel exuberated and, and flushed because they got all the sweat and exticula, uh, uh, ejaculation uh from doing all this convulsive movements in the church and then they realize that they the chakras are still closed as the warlock and the jezebel and the leviathan spirits to sit up on the pulpit with the gold tooth and the cassock um 
and wearing a sun disc. <laughs> and a gold and a gold blue lapis Louisi ring. Uh yeah, they all up on the pulpit. Like, look at these fools down there. They ain't getting no light. We ain't disseminating no light. We just giving it to y'all in little spoon, little baby spoons field of it. Like you're not gonna get the whole version of this light. Because then you'll know you don't need us. You don't need to pay us your tithes because your church is within. They all know this. You are sure, uh, you are sure that you will see uh, and find your sexual orientations being represented in movies, TVs, music, or in the theater and in school curriculums. Y'all are guaranteed to see this and find all of these representations uh, and positions of power, whether it's in the church, whether it's in pol political affiliations, everything. Y'all get positions of power at your workplace. You are guaranteed to see a straight heterosexual person, right? Number 13, you live comfortably and openly with your partner without this, this scrutiny curiosity or condemnation of others right number 14 your individual behavior does not reflect on all of the people in your sexual orientation uh, your individual behavior does not reflect on all people of your sexual orientation so we know that there y'all all are not rapists child abductors and molesters and sexual psychopaths uh and criminals and we know this right and y'all not judged individually that's the reason why this white man and this white woman are able to sit back uh because they know their ancestors created the most brilliant scheme in all of human history and they get the kids sit back and and, and adjudicate themselves of all the wrongdoings that's still going on energetically as they sit up socioeconomically at the top and not to be dealing with the lower energies that we're suffering with right now. All these anxieties and insecurities, they're avoiding this energy uh, and they're kind of delaying that suffering in this way because we're kind of sacrificing the universe in this way. It's subconsciously picking up through the cosmos that we're the sacrificial lambs. Uh, so suffering, their suffering can 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 be delayed karmically. It's all magic. It's, it's all sorcery. But they figured this out hundreds of years ago that this is how it's going to play out in the age of Aquarius. Whether this white people know individually, some of them kind of are aware of it. Uh, it's kind of ancient cover up, uh, but they're not going to be honest about it. That's why we got to go into these uh, the conspiracy uh, of this whole religion. And how it was established and how they established this heteronormativity and how we're all benefiting from it, but we're all benefiting due to sorcery and magic. Uh, so the breakdown that we're seeing in the black family is due to the fact that our beliefs are changing. So it's not comporting with the magic that we are socially being guided by. <laughs> they know this contradiction psychologically and how can we get the most harmony? We gotta go in and start healing. That's the only way. But y'all get to still live comfortably to the outside world and openly with your partners without any scrutiny, curiosity of your lifestyles or anything, or any condemnations, no matter how dysfunctional that dynamic is, because this has been allowed to go on due to your privilege of being heterosexuals. It's now created this dysfunction in the cosmos now. So it's not even the la the pastor don't even get the final say. God gets the final say, and it's showing in nature that y'all don't get the final say of how y'all get to run heteronormativity anymore because it's being dictated by all of these ineffective uh, and tainted ways that y'all just infected it, and, and it's defected now. So it needs to be reworked, uh, reconstructed uh, in a way that's going to align more with principles that are going to fit more into head of the heteronormative framework, unless you're going to say that, okay, we don't want to do the heteronormative framework no more because we realized that 
we're not all heterosexuals and we don't want everybody to be heterosexuals and we're not forcing people to be heterosexual but most of we realize it's a form of a coercion to assume that we had to be heterosexuals but y'all not gonna say that either so y'all gonna just suffer through the karma of all the denials of how this was established uh malevolently to keep us down as a human race in terms of our human evolution Y'all gonna sit back and be just deal with the suffering instead of being honest and say that they was just some malevolent um, uh, people back in the day that created all of this madness for us to now unravel and untangle. Your individual behavior does not reflect on all of the people in your sexual orientation. So we're not gonna blame all the down low men on the whole male race, right? But who, where are these down low men? At? I can only assume. I assume everybody's on the down low until you're proven not on the down low. And having a girl in your arms don't prove that you're straight to me anymore. I don't know what to identify what is a real heterosexual among you people uh, anymore. And I, I'm very confused about y'all how y'all choosing to live out this reality construct. Uh, it's very bizarre to me uh, how y'all can feel like y'all can still operate separate of the collective that's clearly not heterosexuals <laughs> how y'all feel like and but y'all still able to avoid scrutiny and the curiosities we don't even we're not even curious about men's sexual identity anymore and these men are on the down low so openly and they know they can get away with it and they can do it all in your face and they don't y'all wouldn't even care y'all wouldn't be suspected of because it's not there's no cue to you that it, it could be something foul play going on as these men are now giving each other the gaydar at the restaurant as this pregnant woman wife is sitting next to him looking insecure because she she spotted it but was confused to why he's not paying her any attention the whole time <laughs> as he's looking over at the other table at this infamous guy who's being loud and flamboyant And she about to get ready to pop. But he and took her to a five-star restaurant to take her out on a date to make her feel special, right? Nah, he over there low-key trying to give him some on the side. And guarantee he gonna get up once you go and get go to the bathroom so he can slip you his number. So it don't matter. So women have been thinking that this is a way that a man is showing that he's a straight man by showing all this care. And this man is realizing he can just show you that he cares. Fuck you real good. Buy you a couple of outfits, get your hair down, pay a bill or two. You think he has to be heterosexual. Why would he invest like this with me? Because he's a narcissist and he wants to keep the narcissist supply. You know how much energy he's getting from your weak vessel? Oh, yeah. All that spirituality and stuff. <laughs> he don't want to be hearing about all that ancestors and stuff, but he knows that you got a lot of energy for knowing all this knowledge. And he gets that from you by fucking you, your brains out. As he gives you a couple of outfits and you get pacified with all of this. So y'all get comfortable with all of this. And you never got any curiosity about other people, about the nature of y'all relationship. Because every time they see you, you got a new outfit on. So you must have a good man, right? <laughs> he wouldn't be cheating on you unless not with a trans woman. But you ain't going to get no scrutiny. And even if you did find out he cheated on you with a trans woman, you're not going to scrutinize him on the level if he was with a man or a you're not going to screw numbers more than level of that gay man who's living out and proud. Any sign of infeminacy, even if he was the bottom, you can't even conceive it in your mind. You'd be confused about who was the top or the bottom. <laughs> that would be all in your mind the whole night. You wouldn't know, right? Because <laughs> they able, they you never saw no sign of infeminacy in the bedroom with him. But somehow they're able to just bring this out. It's there. It's just cloaked around this crafty persona. Uh, but y'all don't y'all not getting no scrutiny in our curiosity from other people, condemnation because y'all able to play the role so good. Y'all some really good actors. Why don't y'all go into acting school and y'all can really make some money out here in Hollywood as you're out here gossiping on IG and Facebook about other celebrities, y'all could be out here actually going to acting school, getting a good acting degree, and maybe playing and starting some movies and just some commercials and something like that. Y'all see some really great performances out here in public, out on the train. I just saw a really great performance out outside my apartment complex. Um, Shaquilla, Shaquilla with the head rag, silk head rag, 
loud speaking. I thought it was a fight happening, a domestic dispute. It was somebody on the phone this whole time, and she wanted the whole apartment complex to know uh, about whatever she was arguing about. And I thought she should be an actress. Y'all, y'all be fabulous actors and actresses. Bravo, bravo. Flyers throwing, Rolexes being thrown at you and everything. Yeah, I'll throw a real, real Rolex at you. Hit you right in the head. Boop. <laughs> that was wonderful. <laughs> bravo, bravo. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> what time is it? It's time to duck. <laughs> be like, <laughs> be like, uh, never mind. Let me stop taking jokes. So I was thinking about the uh, Bush when he had to dodge that shoe. You remember that? Doing that press meeting. Ugh. I'm just talking right now. Hey, it's Sunday. You know, I could be doing something like going out, having brunch, go to the park. But I want to avoid all that because I know it's just going to attract a lot of attention. And, you know, God gives me this energy, but my personality is not allowing me to embrace this energy because I get so uncomfortable with having attention on me. And God wants me to break out of that so much. I just can't, it's so hard to be around people. Y'all get on my nerves. <laughs> I can't stand people sometimes. I wish I was I was, was different. I wish I had a love, but I don't. And so y'all gotta bear with me. I'm trying to love, help me love people. And I'm starting to see all of these different ways y'all are privileging, and I can't get too close to y'all because I know that there's some deceptions there. How can y'all just sit comfortably cloaked in heteronormativity and y'all getting away with all of this? And you know, this trans woman is struggling with all of this. Everything I just laid out, being accepted in the church, being able to kiss and hug our partner on the streets, just getting all the disapproval and the laughter and the harassments and the violence, threat of violence, just to tell somebody that you're a trans and just your identity. Now he mad because he wasted $60 on a meal with you and had a good conversation, but not all of a sudden he ready to kill you. Dang, can you see how volatile this is? Just for having this identity. Yeah, or sex, you know, straight people's sexual orientations are never being, are always going to be represented, you know? They're always going to be represented, no matter what they do. We're always going to idolize it the way y'all love, the way y'all court each other, <clears throat> the way y'all raise kids, the way y'all dye your hair. <laughs> The way you give to uh, just anything, it could be gym workout stuff. Everything is going to be geared towards how y'all think is the best way to do it and look good. Now men want to say that it's popular to have sexy glutes now, right? So now men are getting more concerned about how their glutes look and showing it off and wearing stuff that's going to show it off. Do you know how homoneurotic this is? So they're teaching and training these men. Yes, how to be more feminine, but it's introducing things into their consciousness that is now interplaying with their low self-esteem. Uh, if they don't get any type of compliments from this woman, that gay guy walk past and say that he look good is going to make him feel kind of good. I uh, appreciate that. <laughs> I said this so this really nice looking guy. Yeah, a suit on, but he didn't have a belt. And I was like, oh, if he only had a belt. And I to like <laughs> tried to correct his outfit. But I was like, you're so good looking. You're so handsome. Uh, and you can just tell it kind of threw him off because he might never get told this probably. Uh, 
Wow. She's such a striking person, but you need a belt with that suit on. <laughs> and he had to go into the explanation of why he didn't have a belt. If he had a girlfriend that was encouraging him and picking his outfit, maybe he would have had the whole ensemble done. But he had to get it from me. And I had to tell women a lot with their men that they dress look good in the Woman would be so happy to hear that, and the man just be so in, lost and confused to so why she was so happy to get a compliment. It's just a dress in his mind. Y'all don't even envy that with gay men, straight men. The fact that we're able to get women to open up to us and be transparent, and she don't feel threatened around us. I see the way y'all look at gay men, how they interact with straight women. And y'all just look. What is it? It's a blank expression. What do y'all be thinking about? Is this envy there that they could just get this woman to open up so easily? Do y'all feel threatened by that? Like it's some kind of comp competitive streak that y'all have to why you can't get her to open up to you? Because you think that she's just want to get in, you want to get in her pants so fast. Y'all gonna have to get out of this mindset because this has also been encouraged by this culture to think this way. Uh, but this is influenced by this male patriarchy, male chauvinism. Just view the woman, place her, and structure her in your mind this way. And the man is not the gay man is not structuring this, have this structure in his mind. So he's not thinking in the patterns of seeing her in a sexual way or objectifying kind of way. And she picked this up energetically for him, no matter how good or even straight he looks, as long as he gets this sort of uh, this sort of gentle energy about him that is about respecting her, she can pick that up and she will feel safe with him. Y'all don't even realize this is all being influenced by energy. Y'all think it's because this gay man don't look threatening or he don't look like he would flirt with her because he's film, film presenting. But you'd be surprised a lot of these women will go for the film guys. I heard so many stories of gay men getting drunk and going out with their girls and just having fun and mixing it with each other, with other people. And the younger people are doing a lot more than just blowing my mind what they can invent in the bedrooms. Uh, but I don't need to do all those things to have a sense of myself. Uh, I'm okay with calling myself pansexual. Uh, and I'm gonna have a connection with somebody when I lay down with somebody, whatever vessel it is, uh, cause I love myself now. So I don't have no reason to be off balance and not in harmony with myself due to these establishments that's training me to be ineffective within myself and in the relationships that I'm trying to form and make connections with. Uh, you can't dictate how can relate, uh, the relationship, get in a relationship, then dictate how you want to have that relationship all the while not dealing with your own internal confusions that is creeping up in why she don't trust you anymore. But then that matters because you just want that sexual security, right? Just go on to the clinic and get you a, a shot and stop complaining, girl. And she, you're wondering why she's mad that she's been discharging and find out she had and thought she had a yeast infection and goes to the clinic and it find, turns out it's gone or real. But you're supposed to be only with her. No, this is how y'all are getting away with all of this. So she goes and get the shot and then let bygones be bygones, right? You can sit comfortably and openly being this type of way. <clears throat> Your individual behavior does not reflect on all the, and then you doing this is not going to reflect on everybody, all these other men. So they realizing this too. So you can't blame the whole male species, right? Because some men are raping in the prison system. You can't blame all of them, right? And they know that. So as long as they all act apart and nobody fess up to anything, then they know that y'all could just it keep keep it elusive to who is really at fault <laughs> but this is this leviathan spirit and what it's trying to get y'all to do it's trying to keep this confusion going in the mind uh where is that list at damn cornelius move on though it's another topic you're on another topic now Whew. people do not assume that i am promiscuous like they do the gay man 
they're not going to presume that you are promiscuous are so sex focused because of your sexual orientation. We're not thinking this of all the straight men. All they think about is sex constantly jerking off, constantly porn watching. Like this is what y'all think about this gay man. But this is how y'all are. But y'all privilege is is kind of being overshadowed that that's just the way men are, right? As long as it's with that woman and she feels secure that she's gonna be chased. So that's okay if you Call her a bitch if she didn't give you a number. <laughs> you know, <laughs> better luck. I'll just go find some other bitch to get get her number. You know, <laughs> as you're keeping that word to yourself, as she's handing you the number, <laughs> and you're thanking her for her generosity <laughs> and not letting your real true side come out. <laughs> I could get with her, you know. <laughs> She's manageable. She can tolerate all my 50 personalities. <laughs> As she handed you, I know, unwittingly. <laughs> all right. Your individual behavior does not reflect on all the people of your sexual orientation. I said that, but I want to finish up the last sentence on this. So this is implicit bias, uh, generalizations, any categorical identities, y'all, these individual behaviors in these categories does not reflect the whole group at, at all. So everybody ain't machismo, everybody ain't misogynist, rapists, criminals, and deadbeats, beta males like this. You're not gonna be biased towards the whole group and generalize the whole group, right? based on just certain men being trans attractive. They're not even arguing amongst themselves and contending with each other with this sexual orientation debate. So you can see that they form a respect alliance with the male species. The only ones that they exclude are the infamous males, are the ones who even just admit that they are part of this community. So I realized that this was all socially derived to treat us in this way. They demarcate us um by getting us to self-identify so we can exist in this state it's all sorcery the master manipulated they created all of these isms these cultural communities the black community the heterosexual community gay community the white communities the religious communities they understood psychologically that once we get adopt the belief system then we're subject to the curse that's attached to it I don't wear a lot of babies. If you are in this religious program, it's going to give you the Deuteronomy curses. Or falling outside of this, uh, the religious model is going to incur you all the I wear a lot of babies is going to grow up in an unnurturing, unloving environment. And so socially in practice, they gave you slavery to make it look like so it can mirror off this bottle of uh, the condition of all the sexual morality that we were in, uh, deviling in and how our curses was like uh, consigned to us due to those practices. All the while not telling you why slavery had to exist in the first place. <laughs> Cause black people are still questioning this why were we worthy so much worthy of slavery are we ever gonna deal, go deep into that men black men to figure out why we were worthy of slavery to begin with to why we have to exist with bread of shame what's the purpose of it to feel guilty for a sin that you don't even know about where is my um I'm almost done. Sorry, guys. Oh, well. Then I assume that you're promiscuous or sex focused because of your sexual orientation. Number 16, uh, you, are, you are identified by your profession or your interests. 
rather than your sexual orientation. It's always the gay man's sexual orientation. Okay, you're a teacher. You're not a gay teacher, are you? You're not a straight teacher. It's always the sexual orientation of that gay, lesbian, trans person. But you're just represented as your profession or whatever you're interested in, whatever club you're in, sports league. You have a life rather than a lifestyle. You don't see the real lives of our of this community, our individual lives. You just see us as a lifestyle. This is what they do within this gay community. So you just treat us according to how you generalize us in this gay community, which is centered around the glamorizations of drinking and just debauchery, okay? And you know that the individual respectful, upright, gay, lesbian, and trans people out here representing themselves, but y'all negate their agency and won't give them have the respect that they really truly deserve because you just want to cloak them within this the categorizations of this gay uh, hetero the gay community and you don't expect us to also see y'all hetero number no construct and hetero establishment of heteronormativity in the same light as well you want us to see y'all individually as well right you don't want us to say all oh, y'all are crazy psychopaths and create all this dysfunction in society because y'all stray away from this religion. When I know that there's so many upright, decent human beings that are in this heterosexual community that are not representing, but they just don't have the backbone to really stand up against this hypocrisy because they're dealing with spirits that have been influenced through church culture and y'all's establishment in the culture and the society is influenced their minds. And nobody can verifiably know how to be heteros, a true, upright, decent, moral, heterosexual human being anymore. Does that mean that you got to go back and change the establishment? No, you got to change these people. Each one teach one. You can, uh, number 18, you can raise kids without the threat of state intervention are being rejected by the children. Your children are not gonna be rejected at the school due to your parents' sexual orientation. Y'all get a privilege for this. You feel secure that few hates, hate crimes are targeted at people like you because of your sexual orientation. And y'all okay and comfortable in y'all hearts about learning that a club, a gay club got shot up and 50 people died. Oh, that's so tragic. Honey, what's for dinner? right you you know what i mean integrate any type of empathy or try to understand deeper into the psychology of the hate behind that kind of crime and how they can y'all can prevent that right but straight people are not thinking like this at least men straight men are not thinking that they can be subject to a I hate crime because they're heterosexual. They're not thinking this way because of their sexual orientation. And you never have to justify your identity, your lifestyle, your life, or your sexual orientation to people. Never. Y'all never have to do these things. These are, these are structural patterns that have got y'all to behave this way. And lastly, number 20, you benefit from public recognition and celebration of your relationships. Oh, yeah, you Kim and Kanye's, your Angelina and Brad Pitt's, your Portia Williams of Real Housewives of Atlanta. Y'all glorify and celebrate y'all marriages. Y'all spend lavishly on y'all weddings uh, to show the world that y'all still value this institution. Uh, and rarely do we see and get to see representations in our communities of our marriages. Like our Wanda Sykes, the Ella DeGeneres, the RuPaul relationships, our Billy Porter's. We kind of see a little bit of his life, but not to the degree and we don't celebrate it and recognize it as much as straight people. Uh, or this Niecy Nash, who recently was got married to her husband, trans husband. So uh, we this this is to conclude to just reveal and just show tell implore to you heterosexual people that homophobia hurts everybody in our society, and you gotta look at this establishment as being the facilitator of this homophobia and how the church, the social climate has tainted the culture 
to where y'all need to go back and restructure it uh, to where you can have more inclusivity and embody the Christ-like consciousness that's going to allow y'all to have more empathy and acceptance of members of other groups and lifestyle practices. It's going to have to happen. I'm imploring, I'm begging y'all to go on this journey with yourselves to really look at these areas that y'all haven't really truly evolved with and know that the only way that you're going to be able to heal it is to kill it once and for all and say that I'm no longer a homophobe and I'm going to accept and embrace people of this identity. Uh, if it kills me to love them, I'm going to love them back to wholeness because I have a responsibility as being God's keeper. And I'm going to be my brother's keeper as I'm upholding God's promise in my life, uh, which is why I'm able to wake up with the most harmony uh, and the most balance to keep my life keep scopesthetic and to keep it with a certain energy that's going to keep me a leader of my life and a leader of my pack, keep me in control and keep me to have all the agency to keep inventing and growing and being the man and the woman that I want to be in my life. And I can't be the fullest expression of that if I'm single-handedly going out and limiting and sequestering and marginalizing other groups of people and low-key hating on them, not validating them and ignoring them and giving them energies that I don't want to get back to me. And if I'm going to recognize and be honest that this world is operated by karma, then I should expect some karmic lesson in my role as a benefactor of upholding the morality of what God promulgated. And if you want to say that hit on normativity, being with the opposite sex couple is a sign of this. And you're going to have to back that up also with some moral principles, some righteousness, and, and some examples of how you are your brother's keeper. Uh, don't kick me when I'm falling because you see me stumbling. Um, and if you think that's stumbling in the psychological sense or spiritual sense, and if I'm defeated in all these areas, then help me, brother, get back to myself. But y'all not doing this in this church communities. Uh, you kept us marginalized for far too long. And we want to get back in because we want this healing. Let these gays, lesbian, and trans people back in this church community so we can get our healing and teach them how to truly love themselves. Uh, because we see that everybody's just broken. Uh, and I'm tired of everybody's being broken. So this is just, I'm going to tell Bye.